Well, hello and greetings from a snowy northern Michigan. This is Bob the Science Guy, and we're going to do something a little different today. It seems a lot of our work involves targeting specific flat earthers and their videos for doing bad science. I think that it would be a good idea to single out some people that are in the debunking community that do really good science, but maybe have very small channels. I've mirrored a lot of videos, but I want to actually highlight a couple of them today. So let's have a look at some globe earthers that can science. Now the first one that I'm going to highlight is Dang Josh. Dang Josh uh, has appeared in a number of my videos in the past. Now, for example, many of you may remember this video that he did, which was a direct demonstration of refraction over a can using liquid butane. I used this in my Monterey Bay episode. And uh, this video right here was one of the first videos I saw on YouTube that really clearly demonstrated refraction. And it really impressed me when I first found it. So what I'd like to do today is let's go over some of his work and uh, maybe encourage you to stop by his channel and give him a subscription. Okay, this is Dang Josh, and he uh, is a musician as well. But uh, he really does some good science work here. Let's go see some of these earlier ones. Now this one right here is kind of an interesting video. Here he sets up a, a telescope, and he's looking at some buildings that are 25 miles away. As you can see, clearly it's daytime here. But when he gets down here to these buildings, have a look at that. You see the sunset on those buildings some 25 miles away? That's a good proof of a spherical rotating Earth. Because the sun is clearly setting, not very far from his location, but it's not set where he is yet. Now this one is a very interesting observation. Now, here we have the moon pointing in a certain direction. It looks like it's kind of heading up this way here. And that is different from where the sun is in the sky. But he did notice that you see this, this curved line right here? The sun is actually, if you're looking at this video, somewhere over your right shoulder. It's not all the way out to your right side. And he does a very good demonstration of this using a tennis ball, or excuse me, a baseball. And as you can see, here it is. Notice the slight curve on the line here. This part of the face is lit, just like the moon. And let's see where the sun is. So what he noticed on this video was that there was apparent uh, discrepancy in the direction of the sun versus how the moon was lit up. Yet he did a simple experiment and showed that it was exactly as would be expected. So the thing that I like about Dang Josh is that he sees these small things in nature and he notices that there's something that's a little different about them and it gets his curiosity up and he explores them. I think that's a very good characteristic of a garage scientist as I call them. Fouquet Word makes a big point about saying that the sun never shines on the underside of clouds. Well, there it is right there. Got some nice photography here, too. Pretty cool. And on occasion, he'll do a short but elegant debunk of another video. So there's this YouTuber named Patrick Schenk who likes to post... Uh, things from his Facebook group to supposedly prove that the globe is wrong. One of his latest claims is that a denser medium like water actually bends the image of something down when it... So he admits that the light bends down but thinks that that also bends the image down, which is ridiculous of course. And he tries to use a pencil and water to prove that. Problem is, he's using a curved cup, which means it's actually the curve of the cup that's actually bending the pencil to the side not down, the image that is. If you look, because of the curve on this side, it's going to bend to the side this way, and on this side, it's going to bend to the side the other way. There's no reason 
uh, flat container would bend it any other way. Let's actually show that. This container isn't completely flat, it's slightly curved, but I will go to the least curved part, which is in the middle. And you can see that pretty much straight. It's slightly curved, but mostly flat. And so you can see that the pencil actually doesn't bend. It stays in the same place. It's a bit cloudy, so it's hard to see, but you can see that the pencil doesn't really bend. See, the only reason, Patrick, your pencil was bending in your cup of water was because you were using a curved cup. Short, elegant, and directly to the point. Okay, the next uh, YouTuber that I want to highlight is this Jamie Heath. He's, uh, again, a small channel, only 156 subscribers. But he's got some really solid work out here on the Flat Earth. For example, Phuket Word put out this photograph uh, from Monkey Hill, which is an observation point in Phuket, Thailand, on the Isle of Maybe, which I assume is the Isle of Maybe. I don't know. Maybe it has some weird pronunciation on it. But he used this as an example of how the horizon always rises to eye level. So, like me, he tends to take flat earther evidence and show that it demonstrates not a flat earth, but a globe. So, as he goes through this, he actually corrects horizons, he models them, and then demonstrates the principles involved. Now let's look at another one that he does. Here's the famous water level out in California. You'll, of course, recognize the picture of... Um, Trepain Law from Miles Davis. And this is one that just came out a little while ago uh, of a shot of Miami from uh, a little island out here in the bay. He did an excellent three-dimensional model of this and gave an analysis. Here's an interesting one where he went uh, and discussed gravity versus buoyancy. This is kind of a cool experiment on a rocket. We have an internal camera and we also have a G meter on it. And uh, Jamie kind of goes through all of this in a short analysis. Okay, so we said when there was thrust, the water stayed at the bottom. As, as soon as thrust stopped, and essentially he said that the, they've reached uh, zero G, the water moved to the top and then in the green tube the water and the oil just starts to mix and it doesn't it's no longer separated you know oil at the top and water at the bottom and then he talks about how the bubbles stop moving as well so stop by his channel have a look at his analysis and give him a sub you know, there's one more that I really want to hit on. This isn't a really small channel. Critical Thinks got almost 1,400 subscribers. But it's his style that I really like. He does good flat earth debunking experiments. Uh, he ch he's very well aware of what's going on in the flat earth community, and he likes to pick out their challenges and go accomplish them in Australia as home. The thing that is really important about Critical Think is that he does all of these wonderful interviews on people in the community. Uh, as a matter of fact, he's got one with me coming up where you're actually going to see my face for the first time. But he's a great source of information on who's who in this community, what they're about, learning a little bit about some of the flat earth concepts that uh, he debunks. And, you know, he does a lot of work behind the scenes as well. Uh, he's going to be involved with uh, Greater Sapien on his trip to Australia. Uh, he helped me out with some key photographs in, for example, my Bathurst Lighthouse video. And he's just a really good general all-around information channel to go to. And you should check him out and subscribe to him as well. So that's about it for right now. Uh, I just wanted to outline a couple of people that... Um, many people may not be aware of that really do important work in the flat earth uh, debunking community. So this is Bob the Science Guy signing out from a snowy northern Michigan and thank you very much for your attention. Please remember to like and subscribe not just to me but to these excellent YouTube creators.
This rabbit hole's too deep for me.